Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and it's time for your weekly wrap up. It is one day before the big election here in the United States. Some of you may be watching this on Tuesday, so don't forget to go out and vote. There's lots of people on the ballot besides the president, so there's a lot of important decisions to make and I hope you all make your voice heard. And if you are not happy with the status of politics in the country, Get yourself volunteered onto some local board or commission and help make it better. And I am uh, on my local board of ed, and I hope all of you will uh, maybe put in some time for your communities as well. So now, before we get into the wrap-up, let us thank our newest Patreon supporters, Pete Silva, Stephen Hutchinson, and Lynn Sanders, who gave to the tip jar that is on my Square store. So thank you all for your contributions to the channel and everyone who's been contributing on a regular basis and all of you who watch. So this week, I, we, hope we unboxed our uh, big play button. It finally arrived. It is right there behind me and I've had to adjust it a couple of times because I kept shining the uh, light from my uh, studio lamps all over the place but I'm really happy to have it unboxed. I've got a live stream that I did unboxing it linked down below in the, last, in the master playlist so you can check that out. I did a fun Q&A with a lot of you as well. I'll probably do more of these over time uh, now that my internet is working more reliably so we will uh, get to that. By the way it's kind of cool I can hit a button on my TriCaster here and just go live to the world. It's really amazing that I can sit here in my basement uh, and do that. I may have some uh, fun green screen stuff coming up very uh, shortly as well. I also took a look at the Xiaomi Air 12. This is a really nice MacBook Air alternative uh, from Xiaomi. It's been badged with their Mi brand, so I'm hoping they may try to bring this to other parts of the world, including here in the U.S., because right now you've got to buy it through uh, one of those companies that sells direct from China, like Gearbest and others. So uh, really good stuff, though. A really nice laptop for the money, under $600. Nice performer. Uh, definitely worth checking out. We also took a look at the Google Home, and I got a very funny comment from somebody on this. They said it looks like an air freshener, and it certainly does, but uh, this is the Google alternative to to uh, the Amazon Echo. I'm going to have more to say on this when we get to the Q&A section, so stay tuned. I also took a look at the GPD Win. I've been having a lot of fun playing with this thing. This is a, a little PC that has game controls built in from GPD. It's got a, a Atom X7 processor on board, so it's able to run some games pretty well. In fact, I, I've been testing a few more out. I was able to get Skyrim working on it at 30 frames per second. Uh, other folks have been writing in with some of their success stories with this as well, so it's not going to again, best any kind of gaming laptop, but if you coax and prod and uh, use some plugins, perhaps you might be able to get a lot of your favorite games running on this thing. And I've been having a lot of fun just experimenting with uh, different things. So once I get enough things kind of uh, in there and working, I may do a follow-up video with all the stuff that I'm doing with it. I would love for all of you to post your videos too. Maybe I'll do a uh, wrap-up where I will link to all of your videos so we can uh, see what everyone is doing with this device. Really cool product and definitely worth taking a look at. And on my mind tonight is HBO Go Xfinity and the NVIDIA Shield TV because the other night I was trying to watch Westworld on my NVIDIA Shield so I downloaded the HBO Go app and what do you know, Comcast does not allow me to use the HBO Go app on my NVIDIA Shield TV or any other Android TV device for whatever reason. However, you can use the Chromecast function of your phone or tablet to transfer over that video and get it working that way, which is just so crazy because the same device is requesting the HBO Go content, the NVIDIA Shield TV. It's just that Comcast is making it difficult for people with alternative boxes to consume content that they are paying for. And this is just driving me crazy. And people People wonder why, first of all, they may cut the cord, but secondly, why people pirate stuff. It's because of this stupid anti-consumer practice going on by uh, Comcast and other cable providers to make life difficult for us. Just let us play what we want to watch. We're paying for it. Just drives me crazy, but I wanted to get that off my chest, so thank you for listening. I also wanted to let you know I've been looking for a prepaid uh, cellular provider for some of the phones that I test here on the channel. I didn't want to pay all that much per month, uh, but I wanted something usable. And uh, the folks from Mint Sim reached out to me and sent me a free month and I've been checking it out here. It's a, a $21 a month plan, uh, but you buy it as a uh, bulk 12 month subscription. So I think it's $250 for the year. You get two gigs of data uh, and unlimited text and, and phone calls. And I tested it out on my, uh, my OnePlus 3 phone the other day. I got pretty decent bandwidth even out in my neck of the woods. It doesn't work in my house, but uh, nothing does except for Verizon. But I was out and about around town and was getting some decent uh, traffic on it. So I think if you're looking for something on a 
prepaid basis, this might be worth taking a look at. I'm probably going to subscribe to this, just do the $250 for the year because I get uh, these cheap Android phones in all the time and I'm never able to really test their LTE radios because I didn't have a subscription. So uh, this one seems like a pretty good deal. They've got some other data tiers also. And it looks like if you do commit to the year, it might uh, be a better deal than uh, going with another provider. But I'd love to hear your thoughts if you know of anything better. And now it's time for some Q&A. And a lot of you wrote in as to why I'm spending money on MacBook Pros and not uh, building out PC workstations that could be uh, more powerful. And uh, the truth is I actually have a more powerful PC workstation sitting right next to my 5K iMac right now. But uh, the reason I use the Mac is because I use Final Cut Pro 10. And that has been a, uh, a editing platform that's a bit controversial on the professional editing side because Apple, of course, blew up their old version and uh, created this new one that works a lot more like iMovie. But I have found it to be incredibly efficient, more so than I have been able to find with Premiere and other platforms on Windows. And I'm yeah, you know, I'm a creature of habit to some degree, and I am really about efficiency and just getting uh, this video uploaded and edited as quickly as I can and as nicely as I can. And Final Cut really uh, lets me do that. So that's why I've been very much attached to the uh, Mac platform. Now, I did contemplate uh, having my PC become a Hackintosh, but I started going down that road and looking at all the stuff that I had to do to get it to work. And I just didn't have time to really uh, futz with it to get it up and running. And my biggest concern was that at some point, some update comes down and blows it all up. So I figured, you know what, it's better off for the sake of the channel and for all my other work that I do that I just get a uh, proper Mac to do uh, editing with uh, on the desktop side. And what I really wanted to get uh, for editing 4K video on the road was the MacBook Pro when they finally refreshed the hardware, which they did about two weeks ago. So I'm just waiting for that, uh, that, power, that power Mac or the MacBook Pro <laughs> to show up here. Uh, so that I can start doing that. And I also like to edit video in my kitchen, believe it or not. Uh, so these videos that I do down here in the studio that I shoot at 1080, I can still do on my old Mac, but uh, that keyboard on that machine is busted and it's really driving me crazy. So I've been really editing a lot more down here. And the days that I work from home, I'm actually in this room for uh, 10, 15, 10 or 15 hours a day. So I like to just get a change of scenery when I'm working on things at night. So I'm really looking forward to having a uh, computer that can keep up with me. But I did want to talk about uh, why I use a Mac and I, th I think this uh, viewer's comment here uh, really sums it up. It's just that you it, it, whatever it is, it's once you start using the Mac like on an everyday basis and really get it, uh, it's hard to switch back to Windows. And I think the reason, I've never been able to like just come up with a, a solid reason that I could explain easily, but I think what's really worked for me with the Mac is that the hardware and the software are made by the same company. And that's why a lot of you, I think, are really gravitating towards a lot of these Surface devices because Microsoft is, uh, for some, to some degree, uh, running the top to bottom on both the operating system and the hardware. Although, as you all know from my Surface book, that was a, uh, not a smooth uh, experience on that device, but I think they've probably uh, made some changes by then. And what I found being a Mac user now exclusively for the last 10 years is that the machines just work. In fact, my MacBook Pro is four and a half years old. Uh, I've been carrying over system images from Time Machine backups that uh, date back about eight and a half or nine years ago. So I have yet to actually do a fresh install on my main MacBook Pro uh, in nine years, even though I've bought new hardware over that period of time. It just seems to work and never stop working. And uh, that is why I've been really uh, sticking with the Mac platform, just because I, the, the older I get and the more responsibility I take on at work and doing the channel and other things, I don't have time to do maintenance on my computers. So having a computer that I know is going to work 95% of the time is a good thing. And as you all know, if you are a Windows uh, person like I am also, uh, sometimes those Windows machines take a little bit more coaxing to keep uh, operating on a regular basis. So that's part of why I've been uh, mostly sticking to the Mac, but still do a lot of Windows work as well. And you know, there's something about these devices too. It's just the way even the trackpad feels, the way the operating system feels. It just, it just works for me, and that's why I do use what I use. And you know, I'm not a big fanboy. I may sound like that to some of you who just can't stand Apple products, but I just like the way they work, and it's just my preference. And I don't fault people who use something else for their daily driver, and I hope people don't fault me for that, but uh, this is my, my preference, and it's been helping me get my work done, and uh, anything, any tool that makes your life more productive is uh, the one you should choose. So that's why I use the Mac. But I do run Windows on my Mac, and uh, I still keep Windows here in the house, as well as a lot of Android devices too. So that is why I use the Mac and why I went with the MacBook Pro. 
And one of my college friends, Adam Foster, who used to live across the hall my freshman and sophomore year, I was curious about the Google Home and whether or not it can do things that his smartphone cannot. And this is exactly the same thing I've been struggling with with these voice controlled devices uh, since the Amazon Echo came out. I think a lot of people were surprised about the success of the Echo, Amazon included, that it's really become a, a part of the fabric of people's lives to some degree. They set these things up, they talk to them all day long, and they are finding a lot of value from it. I haven't. I've been trying to find some value to these things. I've been leaving them plugged in now for uh, the better part of two months, and I rarely think to talk to it because, for me at least, my phone is always next to me, and I'm always able to get uh, what I need from my phone. And typically, I'm just typing stuff into my phone, not talking to it. Maybe it's just my age. I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm not there on these things. But I know a lot of people are finding some value to them, and I think from the standpoint of Google, especially with the Google Home, this is not a hard thing for them to implement because the artificial intelligence is relevant for the home. It's also relevant for the phone and uh, even their apps that they're developing that you can type and talk to the, uh, to the assistant via text on your keyboard as well. So I think this is just a, another way of interfacing with Google's technology. And if it works for people, great. If not, you still have the option to use your phone. And Gavin writes in with a question that I get a lot from time to time, which are people saying I deserve more subs or maybe wondering why I don't have more. Maybe I should be doing things differently to attract more people, improving my camera work, all the other stuff we've talked about before. And I'm actually quite happy with the way the channel is growing because uh, I'm of the firm belief that anything worth having is worth spending a lot of time and investment in growing organically versus trying to find uh, shortcuts that might get you there a little faster. And there's a lot of different shortcuts out there. Uh, I could make more money by taking more ad deals. In fact, I've uh, given up a lot of uh, short-term little ad buys that uh, would have been annoying to you that would have brought in a little bit of money but really wouldn't be good for the brand in the long run. So I, I'm very, very, very mindful of uh, respecting your time because any time that I do a sponsorship, uh, you're giving me something very valuable, your time, in exchange for uh, me pitching you with something. And I want to make sure that the things that I pitch you are things that I can get behind. So I'm taking a lot of uh, careful attention to those sorts of things. But even on the growth side, there are things that you can do like joining an MCN uh, that would extract revenue from me that uh, might bring me some maybe perhaps less than legitimate new traffic that may not be really engaged in the channel but uh, might come as a way of trying to prove to me that the thousands of dollars a year that I'm giving to them for uh, joining their network might help. And those are things that I'm not really willing to do. So I'd rather spend five or ten years and build up something than uh, take a few shortcuts that might get me there uh, in six or eight months. And it's just not, not what I want to do. I really want to build something uh, that is legit and it takes time to do that. Any business goes that way. Really you really have to put in the time to make things work. I think we've entered an era where we've seen the Googles and the Facebooks just explode, but uh, that does come at a cost to those founders and sometimes they get tossed aside when those companies get too successful or uh, they give away so much of their company to venture capital firms that they end up working for the firms that funded them as opposed to working for themselves. So as long as I can afford to uh, keep this steady growth going, that's what I'm going to do. I did want to show you though uh, what the channel growth has looked like. So there's a great site called socialblade.com and they uh, do these kind of graphs for all of your favorite YouTubers and I uh, check this site out quite frequently to see how I'm doing as well as seeing how I do uh, compared to other channels in a similar space. And you have to know too that for a tech channel, I am very late to the game. So I'm quite pleased with uh, where we've gotten to to get that trophy on the wall back there and uh, get above 100,000 subscribers in about four years. That's about the time that I started really focusing on the channel as you know it today. It was about four years ago. So around the time that I got that MacBook Pro actually, that MacBook has really been building this channel up here. So uh, you can see that over time that uh, it took a long time to get growth going. It took, again, a good uh, two years or so before I started moving the needle. And then a uh, holiday season of uh, 2014 was when things really took off and I went above a million views. And it was amazing because I started that year uh, well under 500,000 a month and ended up well over a million a month by the time we got to the end of that. And uh, that was all due to finding products that were very search friendly because before that I was doing some search friendly stuff, but a lot of generic things that nobody had ever heard about that nobody was looking for. Uh, when I switched to more name brand things that uh, were on people's minds, that suddenly moved the needle. And as you can see, my views have been uh, at or above a million a month ever since. And I've been really mindful of trying to pick the things that uh, will be of interest to you as well as be of interest to search engines uh, people. And what you can see here too on my subscriber base is that uh, we've had a very relatively steady 
steady growth in subscribers. We have a huge bump right around the holiday season when a lot of people who are doing searches find the channel for the first time and are interested in it. We have a bit of a summer doldrum here, which uh, you can see is also occurring in this year. And now we're starting to pick up as we're hitting the fourth quarter. So I'm averaging anywhere from between like three and 4,000 new subscribers a month. And that's where I've been for the last two years. And that's steady growth. I'm okay with that. I'd love to see the growth go quicker, but uh, as I've experienced in my own life and my family business, it takes a long period of time and a lot of hard work uh, to build something that uh, is valuable. And I don't want to trade value early in order to uh, maybe take a few steps ahead and end up with nothing at the end but, but an but a infomercial. So I've been really careful about uh, how I've been approaching this growth. I've been very patient and I'm going to be patient moving forward. If it takes me 10 years to get to a million subs, so be it. If, if that's what it takes, I'm willing to spend the time to make it happen because I really enjoy doing this. It's almost uh, 11 o'clock p.m. Uh, so I put the kids to bed. I did all my day job stuff and now I'm sitting here talking to all of you instead of watching TV and that's what uh, drives me right now. So I'm perfectly fine just building value up over time and letting it be that. But I did want to talk about a channel that uh, has been in a similar boat and uh, has put in a lot more time than I have. So Captain Disillusion, you've probably seen his videos before. This guy is amazing. He's been doing this for over 10 years and it wasn't until maybe the last six months or so that he's seen uh, the kind of subscriber growth that he has been working towards for way too long. He should have been bigger a lot sooner than this. But you can see here he's got 260, uh, 274,000 subscribers now. Uh, but check out his social blade. He was really uh, just kind of a, a low volume channel here. He only does about one video a month, if that. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. But he had a big spike here right between July and January of uh, 2013, 2014 there. And then he must have had something go viral. And then it was kind of uh, just kind of what it is. And then all of a sudden, the last uh, six months or so, he's really been taking off. He did a, a video with the star of the old Beekman's World show with a, a science thing. I forgot to mention what, what Captain Disillusion does is he uh, looks at viral videos and shows you how they're fooling you and what, what, what people did to fake videos that are popular on uh, YouTube and other uh, platforms there. And uh, his, his production quality is amazing. And I'm going to link to a video that he just put up the other day, which is why he, he became, uh, came top of mind. Uh, he did a presentation at a skeptics uh, conference in uh, Great Britain, and it's probably one of the best presentations I have ever seen. So talk about using Keynote. This guy uses Keynote, and he goes to a whole different level. He integrates live video in a way that I hadn't seen done before in a presentation. He's got uh, such an amazing talent for not only doing the special effects and the editing and everything, but also acting and being able to deliver this character. Just amazing. So you got to watch this thing. It's 45 minutes long, but I guarantee you when you're done watching that video, you will be uh, hooked on this channel and spend the rest of the weekend watching all of his videos like I did. Now, he's also on Patreon. And look at this. He's bringing in over 5,000 bucks a month on Patreon. I should mention, though, whenever you see that number there, that is not what they're getting. It's usually about 8 to 10% less than that. So just keep that in mind when you see those numbers on Patreon. But still, uh, he's bringing in a very good amount of money on Patreon for a channel with uh, not too many subscribers comparatively to uh, what you might see from other high-ranking Patreon people on that platform. So he's got a loyal fan base that's following him. And you don't always have to be huge to make a living uh, doing something you love either. And that is something I'm also keeping in mind as well. I don't need to become uh, the next Marcus Brownlee because I'm pretty happy doing what I'm doing here. If I can, you know, if I level off at, you know, 500,000 subscribers and never see another one, but still have steady viewership, that might be enough for me. We'll see uh, where I go from there. But uh, this is really fun to see this channel finally getting uh, the recognition it deserves. And it shows you too, that if you spend enough time on something, eventually uh, you're going to get there and start meet, meeting your goals and maybe realizing your dreams. And he did this by not cheapening his product. He's a skeptic, a professional skeptic that shows you how to question things. And uh, I'm sure he's had ad deals you know, made to him in the past that he's turned down because he really wants to stay true to himself and his brand and values what his brand is. And that's the philosophy that I have with this channel too. And now it's time for a Q&A for you. And I've got a stack of GPUs over there that PNY just sent to the channel not too long ago. I've got a 1060, a 1070, and a 1050 Ti. And what I want to do is finally get that testbed PC I've been talking about for months, get it put together so we can start uh, testing out various GPUs. And what I'm trying to do is find, first of all, I'm trying to, um, for those of you that haven't built a PC before, get you thinking about it. Because I kind of consider this like the, 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 the completion of your Jedi training 
gaming as a geek, to build your own PC, like building your own lightsaber. Remember when Luke Skywalker built his lightsaber, Darth Vader was very impressed with that. So I want you as, as techies who've never built a PC before to think, just start thinking about it and see how relatively easy it is to do. Uh, but what I want to do is really look at the differences between uh, these three GPUs plus the 1080 that I have on my other computer next door and uh, come up with some way to be able to demonstrate that. So I'm just curious what benchmarks you all think might be helpful to illustrate the differences between these GPUs. I guess we could run games, but we're probably going to be looking at very marginal differences in image quality versus frame rates. So I'm trying to come up with a very easy and visual way to kind of show you the differences between these GPUs as we're testing everything out. It's going to be something new for the channel because I don't de often get into the technical weeds, so I'm trying to do something in a way that uh, is consumer friendly, but also technical enough to give everyone some good information on the differences between these three GPUs, so definitely let me know what you think. And I'm going to CES again this year, and I want to cover it differently than I did the last time, because I went there last time, I did about 45 different videos, and it really, I think I just overwhelmed the audience. Now, the subscriber base was about half of what it is now, but still I was not uh, seeing the kind of response from subscribers that I was hoping to get from uh, coverage of that kind of event. But I have found over the last year or so uh, that I've, I've been going to a lot of these local consumer electronics events and giving you my take on what I saw there, you know, kind of pulling out the more interesting products and uh, talking about them in a format like the wrap-up here. That seems to be doing a lot better. So I'm going to probably replicate that model uh, while I'm out there. And what I was thinking about doing was uh, putting together a master video for maybe five or six different product categories. So of course I'm going to look at PCs and set-top boxes and that sort of thing, but I'd love to get some feedback from you as to uh, the types of products that you think I should be taking a look at while I'm out there, and then I'll uh, make a video of all the interesting uh, products in each category that uh, are worth talking about from the show, rather than showing you everything and then letting you just listen to interviews for uh, hours on end. What I will do though while I'm there is uh, certainly if I find something really cool and interesting, I will definitely do a video on it because last time there was a BMW that was driving people around before self-driving cars became such a common thing these days. So uh, that was kind of a neat video that did very well. So I'll certainly do those while I'm out there, but I may not do more than uh, four videos while I'm there and then do a bunch when I get back, uh, just kind of rolling through all the different things on a per category basis. I wanted to hear what your thoughts were on that uh, and let me know what I should be thinking about covering. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have fan funding set up at lon.tv, so you can make a contribution there. We've also got the Plex promotion still going here, so if you uh, go on Plex and create an account, no credit card or anything, just create a Plex account so you can start syncing up your content, uh, we will get a, a little commission from Plex for that, so definitely check that out. That would certainly help out the channel quite a bit. Also, be sure to check out the holiday gift guide for Amazon at lon.tv. TV slash gift finder. I think my link was wrong last week, so it should work this week. Uh, lots of good ways to kind of sort through things very quickly for uh, the people in your life you might wish to buy gifts for, or perhaps you might want to send a link to somebody so they can get stuff for you. Now, if you want to engage with the channel, we've got my uh, horrifically late email list here at lon.tv slash email. I haven't done an email in a month. I'm probably going to get to one soon. I'm looking forward to finally figuring out how to get a person to help me soon, so that will hopefully lead itself to more reliable email delivery. Uh, we also have the Facebook page, which I do keep up with on a regular basis at lon.tv slash Facebook. Uh, the Reddit, which is also a bit dormant due to my fault, <laughs> lon.tv slash Reddit. And we have the store at lon.tv slash store that's got some things that I reviewed recently that I am reselling. So definitely check that out if you are looking for a deal. So that'll do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Again, don't forget to vote tomorrow if you are in the United States. And I will probably uh, stop doing my coming up next stuff because I've been finding I haven't been able to actually deliver what I promised because some other other shiny object comes in and distracts me. So uh, what I'm going to do in the future here is just surprise you over the course of the week with uh, things that come in that uh, I am going to do videos on. What I will do on the Facebook page though is take a picture of the stuff that I'm working on. I've actually been considering doing a, a little unboxing series that'll go on the extras channel at lon.tv slash extras. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Definitely subscribe to that because I'm going to start doing uh, some things just to start taking videos of my evaluation process because um, I, think I, I think people might find some of it interesting just to see some of these products as I'm uh, poking around with them in a less uh, formatted and edited way. So be on the lookout, lon.tv slash extras. Be sure to subscribe. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.